Welcome everybody to Eagles Haven Ministry. We are broadcasting live from beautiful Plano, Texas near Dallas. And before we begin to minister, let's go ahead and even open in prayer. We just welcome His presence of His Kodesh Ruach this Shabbat. And we have Shalom in the Shabbat. And we just praise Yahuwah uh, that you have uh, come with us to join with us in we have an opportunity to come into your home and to come into your, into your place of Kabad to worship and fellowship and, and join together. Now let's allow Abia to minister to us in worship. The beginning and the summer 
sovereign of a sovereign master of master you're the great I am you are the sovereign of his team Yahuwah strong and mighty Yahuwah Sabah Father, we worship you. We blow the shofar in our land and let the name that's above all names, Yahuwah, the creator, our Yah, our Alahim of Shamaim and Aretz be proclaimed throughout the land in his Ben, our Savior, our Yeshua. His name is Yahushua. And we give praise and we give honor and all thanksgiving come before you and to worship you father and praise you and honor you and right now in the Shem of Yahushua we take dominion authority and we rebuke bind crush and destroy all doctrines of demons all strongholds of the enemy that would come against us in any way in any manner in any fashion that no weapon formed against us shall prosper for we proclaim and we declare that Yahuwah he is the Alahim he is our Alokim he is the one, and we proclaim that all principalities, all powers, all names, all things shall bow, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Yahushua is the Mashiach, and Yahuwah is the controller of all. We give them praise and thanksgiving, and we just touch and agree. We touch and agree, and stand on the promises of Torah that we will believe and trust in him in all aspects in all areas to walk in the fruit of the Ruach Kadosh to walk in the mind of the Ruach Kadosh and have the Kodesh mind of Yahuwah at all times with a renewed mind we praise him we honor him we worship him and we thank you father for the opportunity to come here and i pray that the same kodesh rock neshima anointing that's with us in this room will be felt in the place where people are hearing this by a cd watching by a dvd pre-recorded or watching live on the stream we just pray in the shem of yahushua that people would come to the revelation and the understanding of who is the master who is the controller and who is the true name that has brought us into one covenant to the covenant to be grafted in to the house of israel and to walk in the fruit of that covenant of those ten word mighty word covenant in the shem of yahushua we thank you father we praise you we worship you we honor you and we thank you for this opportunity to give you praise and honor and we clothe ourselves with that mantle this morning and we welcome everybody that is tuning in and we just thank you for your presence and your opportunity to break the shackles off the people to break the strongholds of lawlessness off the people as we become one in the Torah in the, and have an understanding in the Tanakh even the Brikadasha of healing miracles signs and wonders of the Shilakim anointing as we celebrate together and we come to this understanding and revelation in the Shem of Yahushua HaMashiach Amen and Amen and Amen Hallelujah we praise Him we thank Him for this opportunity to come into your homes I just want to 
thank you for tuning in and thank you for the time and it was a pleasant time to have hear my wife share that beautiful song and we just thank the father for the opportunity to come together and to to actually break bread together and celebrate even if you were using you might be using a different calendar and celebrating under the new calendar or some of it, some people might be having the 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 new month feast today they say new moon but it's it's the kodesh the new month feast today and some do it in a different time frame uh we just celebrate together because we want to be unified there's not enough of us in the house of yahuwah the followers of yah of if you're a part of israel in any form of any manner if you're part of Ephraim, if you're part of uh, uh, Benai Yoshef, or if you're a part of Judah, Yehuda, you're grafted into the same stump. And uh, and if you use a different calendar, we just celebrate in unison because there's not enough of us out there to to be divided. Uh, we don't want to be like the Christian community, uh, dividing up amongst one another we want to be one with one another in the ruach of unity by the kodesh ruach of the neshima of yahuwah praise yahuwah hallelujah so the ones that are celebrating shabbat we shabbat with you and the ones that are not we just celebrate torah <laughs> the torah with you and we have torah of understanding so this this message we're going to continue we're going to continue this message and we're going to uh, enter into the part 7 of Healing Miracles According to the Shalakim, part 7. We want to break the strongholds of doubt and unbelief. We want you to have this mustard seed and monah, the ta the, the, what, we, what we call the matath, the gift in Hebrew, the matath of the mustard seed and monah. To believe in healing miracles and signs and wonders. We don't want you to, to, to be left out on that. Because we know that many of our brothers from Yehuda in Israel. They, that practice, some of them practice in the Messianic and the Talmud oral. And some are the Hebraic roots that are uh, getting too much Talmud. And there's doubt and unbelief. And there's people that need to be healed in their camp. And they come to their synagogues like a hospital needing deliverance and healing but they're not getting it because the shepherds are not true physicians in the spirit realm so to speak they're good in the as a scribe they're good in doctrines of men and other doctrines and traditions of men but they're bringing in what they call in today there's a word they use very commonly in the messianic and the hebrew roots movement that is coming from the rabbinical talmud of babylon that they say that they're coming with the wisdom of tradition of the Jews. Well, you know, I, I must be honest with you. I can't, when I hear the word Jew or Jews, it, it cringes me. It, it just, it, 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 I, I tolerate it when it comes from our Yehudi brothers. But it, 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 I cringe because it was Adolf Hitler and the Catholic Church created the word Judaizers, created the word Jew, and created these words. We're from the house of Yehuda, or you're from the house of Yosef. I, I believe I'm from, from one side of my family. I believe I'm from the house of Ephraim, Benai Yosef, and uh, the sons of Joseph from Ephraim. But whichever way you believe your roots come from, of your ancestors from your mother or father's side, one thing's for sure. We're not Jew. Jew's an English Catholic word. Jew, the J don't exist anyways. That's a paganish, that's a Germanic, Latinish word. It's supposed to be Yehudi uh, from, from the house of, of, of Yehuda. But we want to express the true phonetic sounds of the words that the enemy has infiltrated deceived and lied to the public and brought doubt and unbelief to the camp they're throwing the baby with the bathwater yes yes we know the charismatic cristianos are going around with false healing signs and miracles and stuff like that but 
There, wherever there's a counterfeit, that means there was a truth in the existence in the beginning before it got splintered out and exploded and splintered out with other information and other practices that are not true tobe practices. What we want to do, and, and we're not saying that today we got it down, we got it down, we got it in a box, we got it pristine like a crystal square box. and, and it, No, because in seven years... And another seven years, another seven years, we're going to learn more and more and more in the time of a lifetime, every seventh completion. And we're going to look back and say, wow, I used to believe that way. Wow. But I know now different because I, I learned more Hebrew or I have more understanding or I can read paleo, uh, paleo and I'm reading and I'm understanding a little bit more in depth. So we need to work out our salvation or work out our Yeshua salvation with revere and trembling in the name of Yahushua. Okay? So we need to work it out, everyone individually, without pointing the finger and being judgmental or critical and things like that, in love. There's some things we need to correct immediately. The pagan words, the Latin words, the pagan words we need to get out of our tongue because he's coming for a house without spot and blemish. He's coming for a, a iglesia called out synagogue. And, and he's coming for a bride without spot and blemish. And a bride knows her husband's name when they write that marriage ketuba certificate. They don't. They, they don't get married under some bogus, uh, uh, some bogus um, uh, nicknames and titles or epithet, as they say in the in the in the Strong's Hebrew, Hebrew Greek Accordance books. Uh, they use the word epithet, and you got to look it up and realize it's a nickname of a fallacy name, a fake uh, molding of the traditions of men of that day to put a coin on something on the name of a person and change it we're not going to change your name we're not going to change his name and they never changed Gabriel's name they never changed Hashatan's name yes yeah, slightly one of them uh, we know his the, the where there's Lucifer it's really uh, Gabriel, Gabriel that's his real name under the Latin Catholic word Lucifer but we know the true name of the father now and the son and we're learning it and when we lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, and, and, and pray for them to be healed and delivered, the leopards, to have the leopard uh, sickness of sin and sickness of death, the stench of death, they call the leopard sickness of sin. We want to get them set free and healed and dip them seven times. And they come out of that water, rakats, and washed and clean from the tevilah, the mikvah. So let's go right in to part seven of healing miracles according to the Shilakim Akim part 7 and we want to uh, continue where we left off about the, the, the Shiliak anointing we want you to come to that fullness of Emunah and I just pray that as we go through the scriptures today that the, the Ruach Neshima breath of Yahuwah of the they call the mustard seed anointing, the most mustard seed matath gift, the mustard seed emonah will come upon you. Because it says that emonah comes by hearing, by hearing the word of Yahuwah. So we're going to hear the word of Yahuwah and we're going to take it apart together and we're going to come to an understanding of the revelation of it. We know that it's not the word church, it's the word iglesia, which is the called out synagogue, as you see here, a religious congregation, a Jewish synagogue. They added this word church, Circe, Kirki, Kukrion, these Latin, Greek, Germanic words through the translations, Acts or Maashi chapter 5, verse 15, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches and at least the shadow of Kepha, or Kepha, passing by might fall on some of them. At least the shadow, supernatural anointing, so strong that the shadow, the same kind of anointing that was on Moshe, that they, they, they had to cover Moshe's face because of the, the kabad, a steam of light on his face. We don't use the word Shekinah because Shekinah is a Kabbalist word. It is not in the Hebrew manuscripts. 
It, it's, it, there's scriptures for it, but it's shakan, it's masculine. It means the weight of his presence, the mist. And I know a lot of in Christianity, a lot of people use the word Shekinah and then the goddess glory. Glory and Shekinah are related as one is the same. One's Greek and one's Kabbalist um, Hebrew, which is there's a group in Israel that had a temple or a synagogue that worshipped Yahweh and, and he had a wife called Shekinah. And I've, I've went to this synagogue location. I've seen in Israel the, those carvings on the wall or in the carvings on the stones where they had um, statues both to Yah the deity Yahweh and the deity uh, glory in Greek, Shekinah in Hebrew. This is a pagan Canaanite uh, branch of Kabbalism. So we use the word Kabbad, the Kabbad of the weight of his presence, the Kabod. And uh, it says that the sick out into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches that at least the shadow of, of Kepha passing by might fall on some of them. So strong of an anointing, so powerful of anointing that they were just looking for the shadow of the presence of Yahuwah to reflect through this, this Shalakim man of Yahuwah to come upon them to receive their healing. Large number also gathered from the surrounding cities of Jerusalem, bringing sick ones and those who were troubled by unclean spirits, human spirits or demonic spirits, and they were all healed, every single one of them. Now, the difference from the counterfeit is this. When you see a supernatural event of this type, of a Shalakim anointing, it is different what we see today. When we see in Christianity today, we see a lot of hype, a puff up, and, and photography and all kinds of stuff of, to bring in the dramatize, even the music and the sound in the air, okay? To dramatize. Just like when you go watch a movie, they dramatize it with music. They dramatize it with the keyboard, with this B hammer organ, and they pump it, and, and they get the people all excited in the soulish realm. But when it's done in the, in the real Shalakim, or the real uh, anointing of the Kodesh Ruach, Neshima of Yahuwah, that these miracles, healing signs and wonders that I believe are still for today and operating, that it says here that who were troubled by unclean spirits, they were all healed. There was a complete healing. Not just whole entirely, but all of them were healed. They didn't say, oh, there was a handful that had a little bit of faith, brother, and couldn't get healed. Oh, you a little faith, they say. The, the deity, Feati, Feat, or Fata, which is a spirit, of, uh, a deity of, um, a feminine deity in, in Rome. So, as we continue to read in chapter 5, verse 17, it says, and the high, the high priest, the high Kohana, rose up, and all those with him, which is at the sect of the Sadducees, Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. It wasn't the fact that the, there was miracles. They were filled with jealousy because the people were going drawn to them. And it's what happens a lot. The spirit of jealousy comes in, and once the spirit of jealousy comes in, then they start nitpicking and looking for false doctrines and all that stuff. It, it, but these were Yehudi. These were Israelites from different tribes. These was a, a man of a Yehudi that... That was taught. He was a taught one. And there was no dispute who he was in his position. But they, they allowed the spirit of jealousy to come in, to operate, to affect them, in order to come against them. And they seize the emissaries in Latin. That's a Latin word for what well, we call ambassador in English. But let's look at it as it says again in Hebrew. And they laid the, their hands upon the... On the Moshiach's Shalakim or Shiliak or Shalakim and they put them in public Be'is Ha Shoar so they put them in a place in a public jail they arrest them and put them in a local little place but a messenger of Yahuwah opened the doors at night and brought them out and said go and stand in the Kodesh place and speak to the people all the words of, of this high of this way 
And when they heard, they went into the Kodesh place early in the morning and were teaching. But the high, the high, Kehuna, and those with him came and called the council together and all the elders of the children of Yesharel and sent to the prison for them to be brought. Now, if you notice in the scriptures, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, the, the, the assimilation of the, the, the house of Judah, Yehuda, are trying to assimilate everybody that goes to Israel that are, uh, they, they claim to be Jews or Jewish or uh, from the house of Yehuda of Israel. But in the scriptures, if you look at the scriptures, the, the word Israel, the house of Israel, the house of Israel, the house of Israel, that, that accumulate that makes a mathematic of all the 12 tribes. Now, they were supposed to be all scattered in some gathering then, but here's proof that they didn't say, oh, there's only Jews here, so there's only Judah. No, they used the word Israel. And sent to prison to them to be brought. And having come, verse 22, the officers did not find them in the prison, and they went back and reported it. Okay? So, as it continues to go, saying, we found the prison shut in all safety, and the watches standing outside before the doors. And having opened the, them, we found no one inside. And as the high Kenhua and the captain of the Kodesh place, and the chief Ken, Kenhua heard these words, they were puzzled and wondered what this might be. But one came and reported to them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the Kodesh place and teaching the people. Then the captain went into, in with the officers and brought them, and not with force, for they heard the people least they feared, excuse me, or they were concerned that the people, lest they should be stoned. And having brought them, they set them before the council of the high Kehuna and asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in the character and authority, the name, the Shem? And look, you will have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring the blood of this man upon us? And Kipa and the other Shalakim answered, said, We have to obey Allahim rather than man. Verse 29. He says, And in reply, Kiva and Moshiach Shalakim said, See, so they, they never use the word apostle, and sometimes they would use the word, if we go into the ISR, they would use the word emissary instead of the word of, of apostolico or apostolos, which is a Latin Catholic word word morphing from uh, the, the bridge of, of Greek to Latinish. It is necessary to obey Yahuwah, Hashem, the authority in the name, rather than benai Adam, Elohim aventinu me rabbi melech ha Moshiach Yahushua to stand up alive again, the very one whom you kill, having made him talui al ha'etz, being hanged on that tree. Okay? Him and Prince and Savior, Elohim has, or Yah, has exalted to his right hand to give repentance to Yeshurel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these matters. And so also is the, the Kodesh Ruach, whom... Elohim or, Yehu, or Yah has given to those who obey him. Verse 33. And those hearing were cut to the heart into the lob. Now, if you notice that, and I've shared this before, but if you're a first time listener, whenever you see the italics going to the side, these three words, they were cut. We know it's the lab in Hebrew uh, mindset of idiom, uh, idioms, but it's into italics. Writing slightly different, that means it's not in the original. That's why it is in a lighter form in this King James Strong's Hebrew Greek Accordance. Okay, but we would use the word lob. Okay, but a certain one of the council stood up, a Pharisee, 
named Gamaliel, a teacher of the Torah, respected by all the people, and ordered them to put the, emiss the emissar or the shalakim outside for a little while, or a little, and said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do to these men. Now this brother is the one that has the major school, okay? For before these days, Toda rose up, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, did join him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were dispersed and came to nothing. 37. After him, Yehuda of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew many away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were scattered. And now I say to you, stay away from these men and leave them alone, because if this plan or this work is of men, it shall be overthrown. Verse 39. But if it is of Elohim or Yah, you are unable to overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against Elohim. Yeah. Now, this is going on today where some people, some of our brethren that believe in Yahuwah and Yeshua, and I speak slightly different words, they are coming against the gifts of the Ruach Kadosh and the miracles and healing signs and wonders. Of course, a lot of it is dealing with jealousy because some people can't perform. I remember a man told me one day, uh, uh, when I, I did some heal, uh, ministering to somebody and they got healed and this was a Baptist man and we were in a closed in area and he said to me you have a devil you have a demon and I said to him and the, I was well ready to get angry with him respond but the Ruach Kadosh gave me a word to give to him to prove to him what a weak pump pup he was okay he said I said to him the father gave me the word instantly in my inner man, and I did, not, I did not plan to say it or nothing. I said, if I have a devil, then help me, brother, cast it out of me. Because the father told me if he touched me, and I have the Ruach, Ha Kodesh, he would get a bounce back, and he would fall under, the, he would get zapped. He would get hurt, because he's coming against the Ruach, not against me, my flesh and blood. And he started to stutter and say, I, we don't cast demons out no more. That went away with the, they say, apostles. I said, will you weak, cream puff, cookie dough, soft cake, whatever you call yourself, Christian, you, you are powerless and lawless without authority. If you could tell somebody they have a disease, you got to be able to help them from their disease. If they have a demon, you got to be able to help them and cast the demon out and set them free. You can't just, <laughs> hey, brother, you got a, a splinter. Or just, just sit there and just swell up and, uh, and get puffed up. No, you get a needle, you get your glasses, and you pull that thing out and put some nitro peroxide and help that person and <laughs> bring them to healing. You know what I mean? You don't just say, hey, you got a splinter, man. You're all messed up. <laughs> you know? No, you got to be able to minister to them. Let's keep reading. And they heeded, they heard this advice, and having called the emissaries, beating them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name Shem, which is the authority and character of Yahushua, and let them go. Then indeed they went rejoicing, Joicing from the presence of the council because they were counted worthy to suffer for the sham, the name, and the character of his name. You notice that in ISR they put the word worthy to suffer shame for his name, shame for his character, shame for his authority. How many of you, if you went into a, they got arrested and they, they, the, 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 in, in the, and they put you in a drunk tank and you're just a believer out there preaching somebody and you got arrested and they call you all kinds of stuff and they put you into a jail and then they beat you down, are you going to pout? Or are you going to say, oh, I was counted worthy, man. Praise Yahuwah. 
They beat me down. Oh, and then you look at your buddy, your friend, your, your Aki, your Mishporka that's beat up with you all. Ble- oh, look at homeboy, you got lost a tooth for your hua. You know, I mean, you know, the mindset to, to have rejoicing, to suffer for persecution is completely different than we are in this society. Completely different. It's the mark. It's like when we were in the world and you get a scar from a wound, a fight, a battle. You got a bullet wound, you got a stab wound, you got a scar. Yeah, this has happened when I was fighting these many people and blah, blah, blah. But instead you say, yeah, this scar came when I got beat down for speaking the name of Yahuwah. I lost this tooth right here, this tooth, because of <laughs> I was preaching the, sh- the authority and the name and the character of Yahuwah. And daily in the Kodesh place and in every house, they did not cease teaching and bringing the Bezoras, the Bezoras, Yahushua Ha Mashiach. So they went right back to the place. Why would they say, oh, well, I'm just going to go find another synagogue or another place? No, that, they're Israelites. That is their place. That is their Bahit of Yahuwah, the house of Yahuwah. That is their house. Okay? Let's look at chapter 6 now. Verse 1. And in those days when the top ones were increasing, there arose a grumbling against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were overlooked in the daily service. And the Hellenists are the Hellenist Grushian Jews. These are Greek-speaking Israelites that were scattered in the diaspora. And coming, regathering there, either coming to stay or coming to the feast. And uh, they, they joined in and became a part of the house of Israel, accepting Yahushua as the Hebrew Messiah. Or they are people that are Hellenist Yehudi that are converted. But this one says Hebrews, so they're Jew, Hebrew by blood, that are Greek speaking. Okay, So the twelve summoned the group of the top ones and said, it is not pleasing for us to leave the word of Elohim or Yah and serve tables. Therefore, brothers, or Aki or Mishpoka, seek out from among you seven men who are known to be filled with the Rak HaKodesh and Hakma, whom we shall appoint for this duty. But we shall give ourselves continually in prayer and to serving the word. Not speaking the word, not teaching the word, putting himself in it. You're serving the word. And the word pleased the entire group. And they chose Stephanos, a man filled with belief, or Emonah, and the Kodesh Rach, and Philip, and Brokoros, and Nakanor, and Tinon and Farminas and Nakalos to convert a convert from Antioch whom they set before the emissaries or the ambassadors or what we call the Shalakim in Hebrew Shiliak and when they had prayed they laid hands on them so Shalakim meaning there's more there's a king meaning multiple were present to lay hands on these men. And you know, one was a convert from the Greek province of Antioch. They were, these are, uh, when they mean convert, meaning they went through all the rituals of being circumcised. They're speaking Hebrew. They're learning Torah. They're speaking the language. You see, in the days of our, we call the disciples, this time we're looking at in Maashi. When somebody was converted to Yahushua, or somebody's converted to the understanding of the Hebrew mindset, it was a total commitment. They shed flesh if they were men. You know what I mean? They changed their dress, their clothing. They grew a beard when it was a a standard, prestigious thing to have a a beard, but for a Greek is to be clean-shaved. All right, and he an Israelite in Israel today because I'm clean shaved right now because of my position of, of work. Uh, we call it modern, okay? We call it modern. 
So they, they don't judge you for being clean shaved. They just say, oh, he's, he's a Yehudi, he's, he's, he's a Sherelle, but he's modern. Okay? So that's the term they use in Israel when you're walking the streets there. Oh, that guy's modern. Okay? The way he looks, dresses. But you can tell he's got his Azizs. You can tell by his language he's a Torah keeper. Okay? The way his clothes is and his Azizs. And even though his, he's clean shaved, he's called modern. But in those days, it's a little more different. You would need to be, uh, if you're going to blend in among the, the Yehudi or the Yesharel, you would grow a beard. Whom they set before the Shalakim, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Verse 7. And the word of Yah spread, and the number of the top ones increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the Kehuna were obedient to the belief. Now, listen carefully. And I, and I really want, if you're coming out of, um, if you're coming out of Christianity, and, you, you, and you, you're new to this understanding, they told us, you know, they say, all oh, the believers are Christians. No, all the, all the new believers, all the, all the believers from the disciples, and all the, the, the believers for years in the beginning, were Israelites by blood or people that were running with the Hebrew Israelites in the called out synagogues and then they heard the message of the of the Tob news the Bazuras of Yahushua Mashiach has come okay to us Israelites or Yehudi we always pray if you believe in the Mashiach this that came already or if you don't we always pray for the Mashiach to come and to occupy Jerusalem. So if a person is, a, if, if a, back in those days they were, some of the believers believed that Yahushua was the Mashiach that came, and others believe he wasn't, he didn't come. Some were believing in Torah in a clean way, and Moshe, of Moshe written, and others were following the rabbinical oral of Babylon, which is causing this problem. Most of the, most of the problems that occurred of the Yehudi and the Israelites were Babylon, Talmud, Pharisees, and Sadducees. And the ones that did were probably running with everybody and going to the synagogues and hearing Talmud in Babylon, they, they got quickened by the Ruach to come out of that and follow what's of Moshe, what's written by Moshe. Okay? It says here that, that even the Kehuna, they say high priest or priest, the Levi, Obedient to the belief, obedient to the emonah, obedient to the emonah. They didn't say obedient to the Christians. They didn't say obedient to this particular sect. No, obedient to the with emonah, the emonah, the belief and trust that Yahushua is the Mashiach. Okay, it says a great many of the kehuna. So in the beginning, all these new believers, we have a great flux or swelling of Levi Kohanim that were believing Yahushua as the Mashiach. Come to that understanding there. Okay? And Stephanos, filled with belief and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Alright? So here's Stephanos. He's a waiter boy. He was full of the Hen Veshech Hashem Chach power was affecting ut ut and Motim Gedolim among the people. Okay? But some of those of the so-called congregation of the freedmen, the Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Kilika and Asia rose up disputing with Stephanos. So, now, when I did a research of this, and I'm not going to do that, it's not part of the, part of the teaching uh, that I'm teaching, the topic this congregation of free men of the Cyrenian Alexanders were called Alexandrian Christian Jews. They were the Hellenist Christian Jews of Alexandria that were actually Freemasons. That's why they call it freedmen. They were once in the diaspora, part of the diaspora, and held captive as intellectual slaves or a part of the system of the diaspora and they were freed but if they're called Cyrenians from the Alexandria 
Alexandria, is the, is, 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 there's a whole story of what happened to manuscripts there. And then the Catholic Church, all of a sudden, the Orthodox Catholics, all of a sudden had copies of the manuscripts all put together because the missionaries were killed there by these occult, uh, occult groups. Okay? But when I did a research, they're part of some Freemason, Chaldean, wizard type of people, uh, Chaldean people. And I, I actually found it in a Thomas Change reference dictionary Bible one time years ago. And those from the, okay, in verse uh, 10, but they were unable to resist the chakma of the ruach by which he spoke. So here's some super intellects disputing with the waiter boy <laughs> that's full of the ruach, ha-kodesh, and hokma. All right? Which is the word we use for someone that has a gift of Hakma of the understanding of Yahushua. There's the uh, Debar Banab, which is uh, understanding, they say wisdom, intellectual understanding that comes from Yahua by the Rock. And then there's Hakma, Debar Hakma, which is the word of Debar Hakma, which comes from under, uh, that he had an understanding of Torah, but the Rock touched him. And gave them, and then there's the knowledge, the bar da ah, okay. Then he was mixed with emona, all right. And they instigated men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moshe and, El Elo and Yah or Elohim. So here's some Talmud oral Babylon guys that don't follow, they, they, they might read it and they might hear it, but they're not 100% believing and trusting in. The Torah written by Moshe, they're following the Torah written by Babylon Talmud Oral. And here they are claiming that Stephanos had done something ra bad, what's written by Moshe. Well, it's because they were distorted in their information source. Okay, And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. So they came up upon him and seized him and brought him to the council. So they had to go stir up some strife and problem. They, they, they did. They, it's like wolves. They, they do better in crowds. <laughs> All right. They like crowds. And they set up false witnesses who said, "This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against the Kodesh place and Torah." Because if I were to go among the Hebrew roots or Messianic movement, and they are up there speaking. They say, the wisdom of tradition of Torah and the Jews. Then I know they're about ready to say, ha, Talmud, Oral, Babylon, or Kabbalist words, all right? And I start talking against it. They're, gonna, they're not going to let the people know, oh, no, this is Babylon, Torah. They're going to say all of Torah, because for the ignorant. For we have heard him say that this Yahushua, Nazir, shall overthrow this place and change the institutes which Moshe delivered unto us. And all who sat in the council looking steadfast and saw his face as the face of a Shamaim Malak. Okay? The face of a Shamaim Malak. Let's go to, because we're going to proceed in chapter 8. And verse 4. Then those who had been scattered went everywhere, bringing the bezoras. I'm saying bezora, but in pluralism is uh, bezuras. Bezuras. Verse 5. And going down to the city of Shomeron, Philip proclaiming, proclaimed excuse me, the Messiah to them. And the crowds with one mind he did what Philip said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he had did. Now we're looking at Philip operating as a Shalakim also. Because you've got to realize that this, just because the 70, this is Philip, he is a Shalakim, but if somebody was a part of the 70, they, they probably, most likely, they broke bread with the Messiah. And it might have been not in the inner circle of the 12, but are you hearing me? With the sisters and brothers and family member, but he broke. They broke bread. They shared in the fish. They shared in the food. They dipped in the same uh, hummus, <laughs> dipped together with the bread. They uh, slept at a distance. 
They were around the Mashiach. Uh, the 70 disciples would go to and fro, come and appear and, 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 and reappear and dis- disappear because of the duties and things they had to do or in their, in their duties to go ahead, sent out by twos. But the 12, they would always, mo- most of the time, 75, 80% of the time, would be around Yahushua. And the crowds with one mind heeded that what Philip said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice, and many who were uh, paralyzed and lame were healed. And there came to be great, what we call being ecstatic, or kara, in the city. Ma'ashi chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 38. How uh, Yah, Yah did anoint Yahushua, there's no of here, and they say Nazarayin in Greek, but it's Nazir in Hebrew, a watchman and a keeper of Torah, with the Kodesh Ruach and with power who went about doing tobe and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for Yah was with him. Okay. 39. And we are witnesses of all he did, both in the country of the Yohadim and Jerusalem, whom they even killed by hanging on a timber. Okay, So they are the witnesses from the beginning to the end. They're a testimony, and they're walking on that same anointing, that resurrected anointed power. Chapter 14, verse 7. And they were bringing the Bezoras there. Verse 8. And in Lustra there was sitting a certain man disabled in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. And this man had never walked, never. This one heard Shaul, Saul, Shaul or Saul speaking, who looking intently at him, seeing that he had belief to be healed. So they he discerned with Hakma and the discerning of the Ruach or ne- Nefesh. He had Shamabaim Nefesh, discernment, to when he seen the man that had been crippled since birth from his mother's womb, that he discerned that this man was open to receive healing. This one heard Shaul speaking, who looking intently at him and seeing that he had a monah to be healed. And that's another key, that you have to operate in the gift, the matath of a monah, of healing miracle signs and wonders, to be able to discern if somebody has a monah, to be able to see in their eyes, in their heart, in their love, to see and discern and hear the voice of the Ruach Adosh speaking to you saying, that one's for you. That one right there is for me. I'm going to heal him today. And a lot of it sometimes comes through prayer. Verse 10. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began to walk. Verse 11. And when the crowds saw what Shaul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in Lucanium, The mighty ones have become like men and come down to us. The mighty ones. All right? The mighty ones have come down. The the deities, the theoses, all right? The the, 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 the theoses have come down and they are visiting among us. Now, uh, you know, I'm not, this is not the topic because we're believing in Emonah, the mustard seed gift, Mata of Emonah. Why would they even think such a thing? Because, see, the Greek charismatic movement, even there, in their Greek, uh, uh, they call it Agora, or Circes, the circle buildings, they had magic shows. I call them magic shows. They performed healing and miracles. The Cretans, they, they call Christians today, they were called before, uh, the, 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 when, of course, before uh, Constantine named everybody Christianos, and they were called uh, they were called the people that were being christened or the christian 
They would, they would take like you take wine and bread and oil and you Christianize a ship or a pagan goddess Diana in the beginning entrance of a city or the goddess Grace or the goddess Faith, Fata, or some of the goddesses that when you enter that city, they would have a, a temple goddess of that represents the deity they pray to. And you say, ah, they don't do that today. Oh, they don't, huh? You're driving on freeways too much. You get off that freeway and you enter your local city you enter the border of that city and you're going to see oblix to the mason. Underneath the oblixes, or you're going to see a sign with Blue Lodge or Shriner Lodge or Toastmasters or whatever. You're going to see all these different things right there in the entrance of the city letting you know who they give homage to, who they give reverence to, who they give respect to, okay, in their city. They're doing it today, the same thing today. Uh, there's a city called DeSoto, and DeSoto, in the four-corner entrance of DeSoto, like no other city I've seen in Texas, have an oblix with three pillar steps of degrees, and then they have in the bottom all the different plaques, who they give reverence to they're letting you know when you enter the city well you come to plano texas and you and go into frisco you're greeted by three giant obelixes huge monster obelixes with a with a with a bull cow texas long horn skull horns at the bottom like looking at half of it looking like some demonic skull yeah, and breaking the breaking the word. So you know, so they do it today. It's the same thing they do here. It says the mighty ones have become like men and come down to us. Verse twelve, and they call Barnabas Jesus. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What did you say? It says they call Barnabas Jesus. They call Barnabas Isus. They call Barnabas Isus. They call Barnabas Zeus here. And then they call Shaul Hermes. Uh-oh. Since he was the chief speaker. All right. The little guy that flies around with the wings. And the priest of Zeus being in front of the city brought oxen and wreaths at the gates and wished to offer the uh, uh, offer with the crowds and with the emissaries Bar Barnabas. <laughs> and Shaul heard this and they tore their garments and ran among the crowd and cried out. In verse 15 said, Men, they are... Why are you doing this thing? Bringing to you the bazoras, the good news, to turn from these worthless matters to the living Elohim, or Yah, who made Shamaim and the Reds and the sea and all that is in them. All right, so this is a this is actually a great this is a teaching of itself when you because I, I, there's references of other locations them doing the same stuff uh, uh, in Mars Hill and stuff like that. You got to realize that they they had magic shows. They performed charismatic signs and wonders even among those Hermes and Zeus and which morphed into Isus and Isus and they got Jesus today which is not of course we know it's not his name and I don't even put Jesus slash Yahushua because if you do that you are saying he's one of the same and it's not and if you were to say Jesus slash Ushua, now you're saying that Jesus is the Savior, because the word Ishua means salvation or deliverer, depending if it's Hebrew 3443, 3442, or 344. So depending on how you put those numbers, it is not his name, Yah Ushua, uh, Hebrew number 3091, which is found throughout the Brit Kadasha. Now, in verse 16, as we continue to go on, it says, And in past generations allowed the nations or the ethnos, the nations, the ethnic groups, to walk in their own ways and understanding. Though indeed he did not leave himself without witness, doing Tob giving us rain in Shamaim, from Shamaim and fruit bearing seasons, filling our hearts with good or with food and gladness. Verse 18. 
And with these words, they still had difficulty in stopping the crowds from offering to them. And it's the same thing today, man. It's the same thing today. It says in the Torah that they're going to be Hanavi, false prophets. They're going to have a dream. They're going to do signs and wonders. They're going to perform these miracles. And then when you keep reading that verse, it says, I'm allowing them to do that to prove you you're going to obey the Torah. And people see these false charismatic movement miracles and the people, their fruit, they don't keep Torah, they don't keep Shabbat, they don't keep the feast, they're speaking all the pagan words, they're speaking all the charismatic deities, they're speaking all the Greek deities, and of course, ignorance is a bliss when you don't know, but how far would it last when you run a red light and you don't know the red is supposed to be red and green is green? It's the ignorance is a bliss till you get smashed by a semi truck and knock you off the road. You, 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 my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge regardless. You become an instrument of the enemy in that moment. If you microwaving and mimicking the charismatic movements and all their false uh, impartations of false gifts. Because we're talking about healing, miracles, signs, and wonders from the Shiliak Alakim of the, the ones, the Shalakim that are a part of the first 12 and the 70 and giving to the rest of us. Okay? Let's go to chapter 15. It's a whole story. Chapter 14 is another you, you can you can you can spend that's a whole message, a fun message there if you want to go into it. It is showing that they're using they're calling on the pagan deities of the day, the pagan mighty ones of the day, the deities. They thought these men were coming in the manifestation of Hermes and Zeus. Why? Think for a minute. All the pictures you have of Zeus, you see them with, with uh, got the lightning bolts, they got movies on, and then you got Zeus with, um, with uh, this guy with the big goatee and parted in the middle, and he's coming with authority and a sword, and he's a big, he's a big tough guy. Okay, he's the mighty one, mighty one. But if you look in the in the ancient uh, mystical photographs of Zeus, you'll find Zeus as a good shepherd with a sheep around his neck and not so buffed up and masculine as a healer. So there's stories of Zeus operating in the gifts of healing this Jesus, the Zeus. Okay? All right? So there's different characteristics of Zeus depending on the temple they went to. Just like you go today, you go to different Cristiano Circes or Agoras, and there's different manifestations of the character of their teaching of this one they call Jejeman. But he's not Yahushua, the Hebrew Messiah. We must understand the distinct character. In the name of Yahushua HaMoshiach, the Hebrew Messiah. Name Shem means the character and authority. Well, does the Zeus have a character and authority? He has a character and he has authority. Did Hermes have a character and authority? He had a character and he had authority. Did the goddess Gloria have a character and authority? She had a glory. She has a character and authority. She has her own name and character and authority. Same thing with Fata. They call faith today. Fiata. Okay? She has a character and authority. Matter of fact, the goddess Faith is the only one that doesn't show her breasts naked. She's very, but she does have a, a Hollywood stick one on her hand, like Hollywood on, in Los Angeles. And whatever deity is, whatever priest, say there's a priest of Zeus and, and he's speaking a message to the people, he would summon the spirit of Faita or Fata, which is faith, and she would wave the Hollywood wand, and little magical five stars will come out of the wand on the people and put a spell on them to believe in the goddess or the god that this priest of Greek priest was preaching. All right, so this is all. This is. You, do you see what the Shelia Shalakim were going through? They had competition, beloved. 
They were going into places were operating on gifts and signs and wonders in the false gifts and signs and wonders. Eliyahu went into the camp against 450 prophets of Baal that performed under the operation of five mighty ones, different characters of Baal, the pagan deity. Each character had different gifts and power. And they showed up to that ball game. They showed up to that ball game ready to play ball. They can call fire down. When they, he challenged them and says, oh, let's, let the mighty one that call comes down in fire be the mighty one. They said, oh, no problem. We could do that. We could do that, dude. No problem, Eliyahu. Calling fire down. And then we're going to throw a little water on it and call fire. No problem. We'll call the other mighty one all of water and lightning. We'll do that. And so, when, but when they showed up, because they can play ball, they can perform miracles, when Eliyahu showed up, he came in the Ruach Neshima, breath of Yahuwah, under the unction of the anointing of that anointing, and when it did, it superseded the false charismatic gifts of the prophets of Baal. It superseded and overrided those gifts, those powers, those manifestations, those performances. Because you're operating under the gift of the Ruach Kadosh. You're operating in the true breath, Neshima of Yahuwah. And they, you, you don't understand the, what is inside you, people of Yahuwah. Do not let the, the groups that are out there that believe in, that are part of the Hebrew groups or Messianic movements that don't believe in the gifts. Give this doubt and unbelief of Talmud, oral Babylon garbage that is causing people to have doubt in, of the the Shalakim anointing. These gifts are for us today to manifest, to operate according to, as it says in Corinthian Aleph, to operate in these gifts and go in power. But it's going to be against the opposition. And most people don't like oppositions. They pretend that, like I remember one time, Years ago, when I was a part of that group, a little baby was was crying, and a man kept coughing, and Benny Hinn kept saying, uh, "I rebuke that spirit! Uh, 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 you're quenching the spirit! Yeah, quenching his spiritu, because the word spiritu is a Latin Catholic word. No baby crying or somebody coughing can quench the ruach kadosh." When you operate under the Ruach HaKadosh and you walk in the room, that anointing is so strong, the baby crying don't matter. Do you think the father cares of a baby crying? You think the Ruach HaKadosh, when, he, when there's a baby crying in the room, he's going to, oh, I'm not going to heal nobody because a baby's crying? What do you mean? He's going to soothe a breath on the baby's face and put it to sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Abba loves a baby crying. It's alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? If something is dead, it's all quiet in silence. If it's alive, it cries. It wants milk. And that's, that's the synagogue today, the called out synagogue. They're crying out for real milk. They're crying out for real truth. But yet they're stuck. They're stuck in these buildings of traditions of going, leaving one tradition into another tradition of men. And it's trapping them and they can't operate in the gifts. That's why we're doing this series I want you to operate on the gifts of the Ruach Kadosh. I want you to come to the fullness of the understanding of the gifts. And we're going to stop here. We'll have part 8 next week. This is part 7. Because you know why? I want us to take our time together to build the Emunah. I want this to be a series of understanding. I, I don't want to run through it because I want to get through the scriptures. I want you, I want to stir up your gifts in you. I, I, I feel the anointing on me right now. For you. And I rebuke the doubt and the belief that's been planted in your brain. No matter where you came from, we throw the bathwater out, but we keep the baby. We clean the baby up. Okay? We clean that body up. If you came from the charismatic movement, the Catholic movement, the messianic or, or Hebrew roots or, or Judaism with Talmud or if you came from the New Age, whatever it is, we believe in miracles but we're just getting rid of all the dirty bath water. We're going to believe in the supernatural. We're going to believe in His gifts. But we're going to clean it up and get it accurate. And the, uh, the Shelachim, the Shiliak, 
of Yahushua, the 12 disciples, the 12 ambassadors, they operated against other... You can see it right here in chapter 14 where we're reading. We can see it, what was going on. They were going against a group of people. You don't need, If you look up this understanding of the Agora, this is a place, a circle street like a roundabout, which they still have in Jerusalem and Greece and France and Italy and Israel and the Middle East roundabout. And around it was all the Circes, which you call today's churches. And you could pick apart which one you want to go to. You could walk up to that, that priest of, of Gloria or the goddess Grace and pay your way in and, and go and have the immoral activity. But I want you to know today in the Shem of Yahushua that Yahuwah wants you to pick the called out synagogue, the Iglesia, the called out synagogue, the synagogue that's called out for Yahushua. And I'm going to say this prayer and close with you right now. Because I really want you to have Emunah. I really want you to have Emunah to believe. As you read, you can go ahead and read all of Maashi and just read it. And then I'll just, when I'm showing you on, on this time together we spend, I want to reach down inside and stir up and take a big giant big lighter and light up the propane inside you light up the ml9 inside you and get you to understand that these gifts are for today and father wants us to to because we're going to have to it's going to take a lot of us it's no one man show in some big coliseum in some building dressed up certain ways it's going to take us in the park it's going to take us in the market it's going to take us on the street To walk up to somebody and start speaking languages to them, and then they're gonna they're gonna hear German, they're gonna hear Greek, they're gonna hear Latin, they're gonna hear they're gonna hear Russian, they're gonna hear Hebrew, they're gonna hear whatever language they come from, and you're gonna speak the Bazoras to them, and they're gonna tremble. Like the times I've experienced with Chinese people, like the time I've experienced with Korean people. In time I experienced with Native Americans and I spoke into them and they said you you speak the ancient language of Apache who told you taught you this who spoke who taught you Navajo who taught it was the Ruach giving me the language to speak to preach the Bazaaras to them so don't throw the baby with the bathwater out you just got to get the real thing and understand what the father's doing and, and, and mature it and mature it when you're praying with him and talking to him and have the Ammonah to believe that in the name and the authority of the character of Yahushua. You see, when we walk in the character of Yahushua, we're walking in the character. He kept the Shabbat, the, the feast. He kept the Torah of Moshe. And that was the character of Yahushua, the character of the disciples, and the character of the 70, and the character of them, everybody after. So we're walking in the authority and the character. But if you got somebody that don't walk in that character, they, by your, their fruit you shall know them. By their fruit, you should know them. And they're walking in different character, different names, and different things. And they say, oh, we can do it anyway. We can say it anyway. But, excuse me. Hello. Father, in the Shem of Yahushua, I just pray right now that you would touch your people that are watching by live stream, wherever they're at, they would feel the manifestation of your Neshima breath of the Ruach HaKodesh anointing. It would fall on them right now where they're at, where the room they're at, where the place they're at. If they're driving down the road, they had to literally pull over because of the anointing in their car is so strong. And they would receive the mustard seed mataf gift of Emunah to believe. If they need healing in their bodies, we pray an agreement in this room right now. All of us, there's two or three more in this room. So we agree together with them that need healing in their bodies like the brothers and sisters that have emailed me from last week and wanted agreement prayer. I agree again with you now are watching again. I agree with you right now that healing would go into that shoulder that you had surgery from. That healing would go into that back 
It will pop back in place. That healing would go. These are the people that email me. So I'm going with norm, normal knowledge. And I speak healing into those people right now in the Shem of Yahushua that your manifestation would come upon them of Yahushua. Call out on Yahushua. Don't, don't skip a heartbeat. Say, Yahushua, my Mashiach. Avinu, Avinu, our Father, our Father, Malakinu, our, our Sovereign. He is my Yahushua. Say it out loud. In the Shem of Yahushua, receive your healing and receive your belief. And we pray to continually for healing in your mind. That everything that this, this system is doing to put doubt and unbelief in you. To be melted away perspired on the pores of your body and heal your brain stem and the areas of your brain that of the function of emunah of trust and belief in Yahuwah and Yahushua thank you for tuning in and watching us you have if you're having Shabbat today you have a great Shalom in your Shabbat and if you're you're celebrating the new moon or new month feast as well you celebrate and you have a great time we we I, I just want to say this in love. There's not enough of us to be divided. But yet, when it comes to the things of the gifts and the operation of Torah, we got to be united. Amin and Amin.